So what we're going to start out talking about today is, is talking about searching. And one of the things that I like to really hit upon with searching is that if you have the ISBN, that is always going to be your best search, the ISBN for the student edition. Um, one of the things uh, that's also important is that you don't want to include hyphens, and I'll show you why. If you include the hyphens in because of the way that the system deals with punctuation, your know, punctuation, whether it's a hyphen or a comma or a period or a colon, those things vary a lot in terms of how they're used and the system is trained to ignore them. So what this means is that if you include this ISBN with the hyphens, it's going to look for every little piece of that, the 978, the 1, the 60328, all of the different pieces in different uh, ISBNs. So that means that we get 8,616 files. And so um, your record may or may not be in these search results. And even if it is, you don't want to sift through 8,616. So just take out those hyphens and you will go right to the file that you need. Um, one other thing that I want to point out is that it's really important we don't receive the teacher's editions. So uh, we, those ISBNs are not connected to the student textbooks that we receive. So um, be sure it's the student edition. And another thing is please try not to include a package ISBN. This is becoming more and more difficult though, and this is also conversely, it's a, it's a reason that the watch list can be really beneficial because sometimes you'll get an ISBN and you may not know if you've gotten a request from a district and they're saying, hey, I really want, I want a large print or braille for this, this ISBN. You may not know that that's the ISBN bundled with uh, an online subscription for six years to digital resources. Um, but most of the time, those package ISBNs are not printed on the print book and they're not ISBNs that we get. So this, again, is another reason that if you have an ISBN, it's not in the system, but geez, it sure seems like that ought to be in the NIMAC. Put it in your watch list. We will research it and we can we can get out there and find out what the actual ISBN is, find out if we have it, find out if we uh, if we can get it for you. So the next thing I want to just mention in terms of the searching is that we are all used to Google searches and how powerful the Google search is. This is not a Google search. Um, you can search by title, you can search by author, you can search by ISBN or series or identifier, but this is not a, a full text search of the record. And um, the reason that that's an important thing to say is that we don't want you to get zero search results because you put the publisher name in this search box or you put the copyright date in this search box. A good rule of thumb for your searching is that if you don't have the ISBN, use a short phrase from the title. The longer it gets, the more possibility that it won't be exactly what it you know, what the publisher, uh, how it is in the system. And so shorter is generally better. Um, and a short phrase in quotation marks is actually going to be the best because that is going to be a search for the exact term in the exact order. So I'm actually going to do a test here. I'm going to show you again the kind of the difference. If we look for American experience without quotation marks, we get 892 hits because it's looking for either of those words anywhere in any title or series. And if we put it in quotation marks, that goes down to 22 because it's only looking for that specific phrase. So that's a good way to do the searching. Another thing that I would like to just point out from here is that once you have search results, if you've done the title search, series search, author search, you have a range of filters that are located over on the left. And these filters will only show up as they apply to the search results that you have. So in other words, you won't see state editions if there's, uh, well, there'll always be at least one state edition, but um, this is kind of a way that you can further drill down in your search results. You know for sure, oh, I want the Ohio edition, and there it is. So. Um, the filters can also be applied. Um, you can apply them, remove them. You can choose 
one and then add another one. So you really can kind of mix and match these filters however you like. And then, like I say, if you want to go back, you can remove them. If you want to start an entirely new search, just choose clear search criteria and that will take you back to your landing page. So the other thing to mention about the uh, the filters is that they can also be applied to the complete inventory. So say, for example, you know that you just recently, your state has a brand new reading program or science program. It's, you know, it's the McGraw-Hill Inspire Science and you know it was California edition, it was 2020. You can kind of go through and look, okay, here's all of the California 2020 files that we've received, uh, 200, 202, they're right there. You can do further filtering if you would like. And then the last thing I want to talk about with regard to just the searching is that you can also export your search results if that is useful for you. And you do that just by clicking the export button, and then that's going to create a CSV file for you that can be opened in Excel and you can manipulate the data in any way that you want.